Welcome to Training in Instructional Design. This will be a lecture on learning management systems. This is Lecture B. The learning objectives for the Learning Management Systems Unit are number one, describe why an instructional designer would use SCORM, number two, give two approaches to modify e learning content to meet Section 508 compliance guidelines, and three, build a training program in an LMS using appropriate standards for online learning. Let's look at some benefits of OJT, or on-the-job training. On-the-job training, or OJT, is very cost-effective, so it can be used by small and large healthcare facilities. It focuses on task at hand and does not require any additional equipment for the training, so it's also less disruptive to the work environment. The training is usually done by a manager or supervisor who coaches the employee while they're working. Some EHR implementations make frequent use of OJT using coaches or trainers from the EHR implementation team. Another option seen with EHR implementations is train the trainer. In this model, expert trainers from the EHR company will train supervisors or super users in the clinic, and these employees will train other staff using OJT approaches such as coaching, mentoring, or job rotation. Of course, there are problems associated with OJT, not everyone is a good teacher, so relying on supervisors instead of trainers may not always work. Often, supervisors in clinics and busy practices do not have time to train staff, and the trainees don't have time or the setting to practice their new skills. With a new HR implementation, the staff may not be proficient in the new application. Using an LCMS does not mean an end to on-the-job training. Informal training will continue in the clinic but an LCMS can organize and bring a lot of efficiencies to ongoing training in a hospital. Training for an EHR implementation is just one facet of the training requirements in medical clinics. There are many regulatory requirements, such as HIPAA, that require employee training and tracking the completion and competency of the training. The following is a list of some advantages of LCMS when used with on-the-job training. Registering trainees, scheduling trainees, developing practice drills, testing and evaluating KSAs, tracking and storing training results, delivering and presenting training surveys. Almost any LCMS could be customized for use in a medical center, and there are a few vendors that market their LCMS specifically to the healthcare industry. Here are a few examples. InfoLogic, HospitalU, DCL Solutions, HealthStream, MedWorks, MetaLearn, CyberWorks. Most of these systems include web authoring and PowerPoint conversion tools, as well as assessment and certification tools. Some also provide training materials for specific vendor CPOE applications, including Epic, Cerner, Meditech, Siemens, IDX, Eclipsis. The University of North Carolina Healthcare has an online learning management system with a wide range of training courses for their employees. If you are following the link, Learning Management System, you can explore some features of this system. www.unchhealthcare.org slash site slash human resources slash LOD slash LMS. Florida Hospital has a variety of training and educational programs in their LMS. These programs cover patient education, nurses, residents, and medical students. The Florida Hospital System is powered by Net Learning and is available to all employees from work or from home. Through the LMS, employees can view available online learning modules and instructor-led classes, register for classes, complete online learning modules, view and print their transcripts. www.floridahospital.com slash healthcareprofessionals slash education.aspx Washington Hospital Center uses the CITEL Learning Management System. S-I-T-E-L-M-S. This LMS supports a consortium of healthcare providers that share training content among its members. The January 22, 2009 issue of Healthcare IT News, an HIMSS publication, gives a brief report on Edward Hospital and Health Services and their implementation of an LCMS. The hospital had offered four-hour training sessions at least ten times a month but those were hard to fit into a tight schedule. 
and often clinicians had to postpone or cancel sessions if a medical emergency arose. As a result, the traditional classroom-based approach was proving unwieldy and expensive. This system reduced training costs and allowed hospital employees to develop their own individual training schedules and access the web-based programs from any computer and at any time. You may want to visit the CyberWorks website and listen to some of the podcasts on implementing EHR training using learning content management systems. The podcasts include EHR implementation, e-learning lingo, and other e-learning topics. This example is not specific to an EHR implementation, but an effective trainer or chief education officer, CEO, should take every opportunity to leverage other training in all areas of the medical center. The University of North Carolina healthcare system had a couple problems. The challenge in the healthcare or any industry that is operating 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year is, how do you get mandatory training to your evening, night, and weekend staff? We also want to use this system to empower managers to develop and monitor individual employee education plans in order to ensure that our employees are fully compliant with the requirements of the Joint Committee Accrediting Healthcare and other regulatory bodies. Learning management systems not only enable training to be standardized within large organizations, but they also provide accurate records of learning and competence. Now we will wrap up this unit by looking more closely at how a trainer works with LCMS to create courses and what standards you should adhere to when designing e-learning content. Open source is available in source code form, for which the source code and certain other rights normally reserved for copyright holders are provided under a software license that permits users to study, change, and improve the software. A main principle and practice of open source software development is peer production by bartering and collaboration with the end product, source material, and documentation available at no cost to the public. Closed source is just another term for a commercially developed software application which you purchase from a company. The company may or may not provide direct support for their product. Bottom line, select the right tool for the job. There is rarely a significant cost difference. You trade off licensing and maintenance fees, in the case of a commercial learning system, for staffing costs to manage the open source solutions, often making them comparable in actual costs. Therefore, you should focus on the ability of the system to meet your needs. When you use an LCMS, there is workflow you should follow. Instructional designers create new RLOs targeting specific performance goals or new courses by assembling already created RLOs. Editors, senior instructional designers, view the submitted RLO slash course and approve the RLO slash course. The RLO slash course would be made available to learners through the LCMS. Personalization rules would set in, targeting the new RLOs slash courses to those who fit or have subscribed to its profile. RLOs collect information from users such as assessment results and usage. RLOs and courses that have outlived their usefulness would either be archived or just deleted from the repository. In the following slides, we will discuss two commonly used standards in e-learning, SCORM, Shareable Content Object Reference Model, and 508 Compliance for Accessibility to e-learning Content. The Shareable Content Object Reference Model, SCORM, is a technical specification to standardize organization, delivery, and learner tracking for web-based e-learning. There are four ability attributes to SCORM, accessibility, the ability to locate and access instructional components from multiple locations and deliver them to other locations, interoperability, the ability to take instructional components developed in one system and use them in another system, for example, content packaged for delivery in one SCORM compliant LMS could be loaded into another LMS that complies with the same version of SCORM for delivery to learners. Durability, the ability to withstand technology evolution and or changes without costly redesign, reconfiguration, or recoding. For example, upgrading to a new computer operating system should have no impact on the delivery of content to learners. Reusability, the flexibility to incorporate instructional components in multiple applications and contexts. For example, 
e-learning content designed for one organization can be redeployed, rearranged, repurposed, or rewritten by other organizations that have similar learning needs. There are a lot of SCORM tools available. Now we will look at some PowerPoint to SCORM converters, which could help you repurpose existing PowerPoint presentations into an SCORM compliant course housed within an LCMS. Learning Essentials is a free add-on for licensed Microsoft Office. It supports SCORM standards. SCORM tools seamlessly convert Microsoft PowerPoint presentations into standards-based e-learning content that can be managed and reused by any SCORM conformant learning management system. Wondershare PowerPoint to Flash is an add-on for PowerPoint. It is an e-learning tool to let non-technical users create flash presentations and SCORM compliant e-learning courses for LCMSs from PowerPoint with media, quizzes, and simulations by converting PowerPoint to flash. PPT to flash content could run on any web server and any CLMS. Pointcast Publisher is a PowerPoint plugin that converts PowerPoint presentations into online flash presentations complete with your own narration. Pointcast Publisher creates SCORM compliant content that can be easily uploaded into any learning content management system. Articulate Presenter also creates SCORM compliant courses from PowerPoint files by converting them into flash format. It is easy to add interactivity and narration to PowerPoint slides. Adobe's Captivate allows you to create interactive lessons with quizzes, scoring, and integration with SCORM compliance. Users can import a PowerPoint file and then export to an SCORM compliant flash course. Now let's bring together all the knowledge we have acquired in this unit and look at how an instructional design or trainer would work with training content to create an SCORM compliant reusable learning object to work in a learning management system. First, you take some existing text or presentation file, such as PowerPoint, and convert it to a reusable learning object using a learning content authoring tool, such as Learning Essentials. This creates a step-by-step -step discrete chunk of learning content that addresses one learning objective. Continue to build RLO for the remainder of the learning objectives. Now you can assemble several RLOs and organize them into a recommended sequence for your learning. These objects are packages by the LCMS, which controls the navigation from one object to the next and tracks the user's performance in the assessment within each RLO. While there is not a Section 508 category on e-learning, it is still a critical concept you should try to implement for your training materials. There are six basic areas addressed by this regulation. Software applications and operating systems includes usability for people that are visually impaired such as alternative keyboard navigation, web-based intranet and internet information and applications, assures accessibility to web page graphics by the visually impaired using assistive technology, such as screen readers and refreshable braille displays. This is accomplished by using text labels and descriptors for graphics. Telecommunications products, addresses accessibility for people who are deaf or hard of hearing. This includes technology compatibility with hearing aids, assistive listening devices, and TTYs. Videos or multimedia products includes requirements for captioning of multimedia products, such as training or informational multimedia productions. Captioning or video descriptors must be able to be turned on or off. Self-contained, closed products. Products with embedded software, such as information kiosks, copiers, and fax machines, often cannot be used with assistive technology. This standard requires that access features be built into these systems. Desktop and portable computers discusses accessibility related to mechanically operated controls such as keyboards and touch screens. In the two sections of this unit, we discussed how learning management systems work and the role these systems play in an EHR implementation. These systems will leverage the high cost of people doing hands-on training and take advantage of the e-learning. Specific topics discussed were 1. The basic functions and technologies in learning management systems, LMS, content management systems, CMS, reusable learning objectives, RLO, 
and Learning Content Management Systems, LCMS. 2. The Fundamentals of Building a Training Program in an LMS and Applying Standards for Online Learning. 3. The Role of Standards and Open Source Initiatives in Online Learning. 4. The Importance and Application of the SEORM Standard, Shareable Content Object Reference Model. 5. Approaches to Modify e-Learning Content to Meet Section 508 Compliance Guidelines.